Good afternoon, everyone. Today here in Pula, Croatia, in the Istrian Peninsula. Behind me, the Roman amphitheater constructed around 535 AD, same time as the late antique Little Ice Age. Now, the geniuses at Harvard want to spray our skies and lower the global temperature approximately six-tenths of a degree Celsius. But the volcanic eruptions that occurred every grand solar minimum lower Earth's temperature anyway. So what happens if they decide to spray, they're lowering the temperatures globally, and then we have these volcanic eruptions triggered by the grand solar minimum. Instead of dropping six tenths of a degree, it's gonna drop three degrees Celsius. This is an extinction event as we're not gonna be able to grow food. The temperatures will drop far too fast. It won't take decades to roll into the cooler temperatures. It'll be an instant within one year. It'll go from your temperatures you enjoy now to seven degrees Fahrenheit cooler in a matter of 12 months. This is not acceptable, Harvard. And during these uncertain times, I've teamed up with My Patriot Supply Long-Term Food Storage, a nice affordable starter kit, two-week food supply, 1,500 calories per day, breakfast, lunch, and dinners, plus the four-gallon storage containers included in that. This is a good first step in getting more self-sufficient. And if you click through the Prepare with Adapt 2030 page in My Patriot Supply, you can get this starter kit for 75 bucks. Please remember there's a limit of two per household in this special offer. Now the reason I would bring up that point is because as we look at the solar forecast going out over the next 50 years, grand solar minimum is here assured almost everybody's agreeing on it, but they're just disagreeing on the intensity and the rapid onset. But if we take a look through the last 2,000 years of history, the red spikes above the line, that's where massive eruptions occurred. Now, if you look at the dates below the line there, 1280, 1480, took a look at 1810, and then the Maunder Minimum right there around 1640, 1650, and we go back 600, late antique Little Ice Age. Those are all grand solar minimums. The correlation is about 100% for massive eruptions during low solar activity. Also, the annual stratospheric volcanic sulfate aerosol injection for the past 1,500 years. Now, I know it's a little bit difficult to see, so let me wide that out for you here. Matches up exactly with the prior chart that I showed you. Different set of research, but notice right around 1280 seems to be the largest injection of sulfur dioxide, in particular, it's up into the atmosphere. But again, every grand solar minimum, there are massive eruptions. Now going into the low solar activity of just the 11 year cycle, taking a look at El Chinchon and Pinatubo, both of those dropping temperatures. So the reason I'm making the video is if we have another one of these eruptions, even at this mild event, if you will, VEI 4, VEI 5, VEI 6 for Pinatubo, Skies are going to cool because Pinatubo eruption dropped temperatures six tenths of a degree globally. And also, if you're a fan of planetary geometry, 79 AD top left, top right, 89 AD, you'll see how the planets, gas giants themselves, swing out with the Earth sandwich in the middle. Electromagnetism at its very best here in 2024 through 2034, we'll see almost the exact same lineups, taking us back almost 2,000 years. So I was wondering if there were any volcanic eruptions back 79 to 89 AD, and sure enough, that purple arrow that I put there is a major volcanic eruption. It affected the Roman Empire to the point that they had trouble growing food for a couple of those years. Now, how does this wind in with Harvard University's geoengineering program called SCOPEX? Spray the stratosphere with calcium carbonate to cool the planet from runaway global warming. It's called Stratospheric Controlled Perturbation Experiment. And they made it a super catchphrase for newscasters, Scopex. That's so easy to say. Spring of 2019 when this thing is going to go live. So they mentioned the Nature article here and Cush and Keith. That's David Keith right here to the right that you see. So what they're looking for is to quickly lower the planet's temperatures. So this is where we get into very careless world here. Imagine if they're up there doing their geoengineering program to try to cool the planet rapidly and we have a massive volcanic eruption, VEI 7, which would be expected during this next 10 years as we get into the grand solar minimum through 2034. How fast is that 
particulate they're spraying up there going to come down? What's the amplified effect when they're up there spraying? And when you say spraying, the idea is simple. Spray a bunch of particles up into the stratosphere. So they're hoping to drop the temperature of the Earth at least a half a degree Celsius over 18 months. How would they do that? Oh, a fleet of high-flying jets. And you thought that was the thing of conspiracies. Yeah, not. But don't worry, they said it's going to be totally okay, mapped out, computer modeling. But we've seen over the last at least 40 years how incorrect the computer models were for global temperature rises in the IPCC. Now they're telling us they're going to use models to predict what will happen with the stratospheric injection of these types of aerosols, reflective. Personally, I don't buy it. Now with that aside, the termination shock, if the practice has ever ceased, is another word for global tax forever to continue to fund this program. Okay, that's one thing. Disrupting the stratospheric ozone and disrupting the hydrological cycle where we're not going to be able to grow food if they mess with the cloud bands by accident. That's another thing. But to be called out as aside from the occasional conspiracy theorist for bringing up these very same issues because nobody's protested or directly opposed the geoengineering Harvard program, they're beyond reproach. Because I'm putting two and two together here. After the Pinatuba and El Chinchon eruptions, these mild eruptions, comparatively to what we've seen in the past, yields of corn, soya, rice, and wheat fell after both of those volcanic eruptions. So A, what do you think is going to happen just when they do their spraying? It's going to reduce the global crop yields. Then we have the planetary geometry. We're looking for something at least in the 2,000 year cycle of the eruptive activity coming here. We're heading into the grand solar minimum. Here's your exact forecast. So these first eruptions and earthquakes of massive magnitude should start to peak around 2021. We're going to get a small respite, but you see as the magnetic waves on the sun start to cancel each other out. So that means the wider that is, the more of the canceling effect is happening on our sun's magnetic fields. So if it's really wide, that's going to be incredible effects on our planet electromagnetically meaning volcanic eruptions, tectonic earthquakes, if you will, cloud bands moving, incredible weather patterns due to shifting jet streams. Yet these guys want to spray at the exact same time. That is careless and reckless both. Where's their projections on when this is going to fall out of the sky? If they go and take this up to the Uber and they have thousands of planes spraying, how long is it going to take from they turn off those nozzles until every last particle is out of the sky? Because they're not taking into consideration if there's a VEI-7 eruption. That is an extinction level event. The planet's temperatures are going to drop 7 degrees Fahrenheit or more in less than a year. You're not going to be able to cope. Our crops aren't going to be able to cope. Our just-in-time delivery is not going to cope. Our economy is not going to cope. And they're just going to say, oops, we must have messed that one up. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. If you like this type of information, many Ice Age conversations. 30 minutes at a time on the go. And you can also sign up for the newsletter for the Grand Solar Minimum updates. OilCCrops.org. Move your mouse around for about 10 seconds. The pop-up box will appear. You're going to have to double opt in to get that. And please remember to subscribe. You're going to have to click the bell and check back occasionally because even though you click the bell, sometimes you just magically are unsubscribed.